Hey guys, it's Woody the Unexceptional Gamer, and welcome to Mail Monday! Weekly series is not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your questions and my answers to them. Uh, I know it's not about the gameplay, but having said that, what you're going to see is Minecraft on my WoodyCraft.net server, and it's kit PvP. So you go in there, and you do sword fights, and you fight each other, and you learn to fight. At least that's what I do when I'm in there. So, enjoy the game, and here we go! <laughs> Okay, this first one's two letters, but be patient. Hang with me. I swear you're going to like this. Stuttering has ruined my life plus, plus depression. I'm a 15-year-old guy, and I live in Ireland. Two years ago, I started to develop a stuttering problem. It didn't really affect me at the time because I didn't care for it. I had many friends from my school and on my street, and I was always outside. As I grew older and reached maturity, the stutter affected my life badly. Now I find it very difficult to speak, and it gets really embarrassing and awkward. Because of my stutter, I have absolutely no confidence when speaking, and I'm socially awkward. My friends left me and moved on with their lives, and I spend most of my days inside playing video games and surfing the internet. My parents don't understand my problem, and they make all my situations worse. They brought me to speech therapy once to request an appointment, but I haven't had a reply ever since. I've tried to get help online, but every solution costs a lot of money, which I can't afford. I have no one else to turn to. My relatives hate me, and my parents don't understand my issues. To make it even worse, I'm unattractive, and I can't go out in public without being paranoid by hateful and judgmental people. I have n nowhere to go. I've fallen into the deep, dark pit of depression, and I have no way out. It doesn't have to be on Mail Monday, but a simple reply would be great. I love your vids. Keep up the good work. All right, so that's letter one. This ties into letter two. Let's read that. It's long, but hang in there. I first started watching Woody in late Modern Warfare 2 stage. It was pretty early, but still a long time ago, and I really think much of him, but I was subbed. I had troubles around that time having to do with school and all the stuff leading up to my GSCEs, English exams, if you, don't fa if you fail, you fuck up your life. To make the stress worse, I heard Tourette's, which constantly made me grunt and roll my eyes. I was looking as far up as possible and only a small part of my pupil could be seen which then transferred me later into quickly jolting my head forward. It was horrible. I knew everyone was watching and judging, and I was always really awkward. But on, also on the other side of my Tourette's, I got extremely obsessed with many things. And certain games and shows, for example, to the point where I would get withdrawal symptoms if I didn't do the activity. And I did get bullied and taunted for it a lot. No one wanted to be associated with me. It was horrible. Fast forward a few years and I'm finished my GCSEs and I felt like I did terribly. After doing them, I felt horrible and as if my life was over. I finished early in June that year due to exams ending around that time. English students have two months extra holiday that year. However, it was the worst few months of my life. That was the year of 2011. It was a sunny summer holidays and I was miserable. I hated everything. I lost contact with my friends, mostly due to me never leaving my room. My dog was my best friend and he died in May earlier that year and I was really down due to that. My parents grew even more worried about me and took me to the doctors where I was diagnosed with depression. For those who've never had any had depression or any form of deep sadness, it's horrific. But to summarize, I can put it into one sentence. Imagine waking up every single morning and finding no reason to get out of bed. Just lie there and think about how shit everything is, with no hope of the future. Suicide went through my head, and I felt like it would make my family even more ashamed of me. Then Woody uploaded this video, Woody and Tourette Syndrome. I found out he had it similar to me, but he was this demigod state of achievement. He had an amazing family, awesome kids and wife, and I thought to myself, he has this shameful neurological disease. I began watching more and more of his videos and thought this guy was awesome. I started to watch his Mail Mondays and soon learned of his podcast is going on called Painkiller Already. I watched every single episode. These three soon-to-be-four hilarious guys and a brilliant guest every week talking about games and funny news stories made my week exciting. They made me feel as if I had something to look forward to every week. It was amazing. Although Although it sounds pathetic, these guys made me feel like I had friends in my life. They made me happy. And after a few weeks of watching PKA, my parents noticed a change in me. I was still miserable, but now I had more vigor in my speech. The day my results came in, I was relieved. I passed them and I got into the college I wanted, but I hadn't spoken to anyone except my family for several months. But it was better. I got into college, I had my family, and best of all, Woody and the PKA crew. My depression suddenly got gradually better. No, I'm sorry. My depression situation got gradually better over the next few months, and I made sure to watch every video Woody posted as well as PKA. Woody made me happy. He was more than an idol to me. He was a role model. He could do nothing wrong and his advice was wise and his humor was great and he had a good life. The only thing I find sad is that he'll never hear my story and he'll never recognize me so that he helped someone and made them truly happy. So Woody, if you read this, you're a good man. 
All right. So I, I, I <laughs> as I reread this, I didn't realize how flattering it was to me, and that almost makes me uncomfortable. But um, uh, what I did want to do was kind of contrast the two situations that these guys are in, right? One guy has a stutter where, you know, it makes it difficult to talk, and it makes it kind of awkward to talk. I get that. I think we all understand that. The other guy has Tourette's, and did you remember his symptom? He kind of looks up into the top of his head and raises his chin and then snaps his head forward and jolts it. And Tourette's is something that I have too. His uh, tick is a little more serious than mine. A lot of mine are internal, but a lot of, like... I wink when I don't want to. I make like a facial grimace and stuff when I don't really want to. And um, um, another thing that's not even visible, I, I call it flexing my eyes. I do this thing where I almost like super concentrate, focus my eyes, and it gives me a headache, but I feel almost incomplete if I'm not doing it. It's a, it's a thing, and it's a mild form of Tourette's. I'm, I'm thankful that it's not a bigger deal. My son has Tourette's now too. Awesome, right? Yeah, because life was too easy. <laughs> well, we got to play this shit on veteran mode, baby. That's how we rock life. So, um, I'm thinking of this guy who has the speaking disorder, and I'm looking at, you know, me doing just fine with Tourette's, uh, my son kicking ass with it, uh, this other fellow, uh, you know, who got into college, he's got his whole life in order, he's, he's finding some happiness, and, and things are going right for him. With Tourette syndrome, right? With this thing where he looks up and jolts his head forward. So much of these social problems are a matter of how you react to them. You know, are you Billy Badass? Are you the guy that brings home the palm queen? You get to define that, right? Not other people. Do you stutter? Yeah. What? You know what? These people fussing at you, they have problems too. <laughs> You can't control what people do, but you can control how they how you react to it. And you know, I I want you to react like a winner and to let this thing go. I get depression, right? I've been there. I I, I follow what you're going through, and I know that it's not an easy thing, or it's not something to just be like, "Well, have you tried cheering up?" Yeah, dumbass. I've tried cheering up. That that the answer isn't that simple. I I, I wake up with no purpose, and I have genuine problems. You know, that, that make me play life on veteran mode when other people don't. I follow where you are. I am where you are. But um, there's not a good reason to give up. And, you know, it, it, people have been successful with bigger problems than you or I have. And, you know, I, I, man, it seems like I've got that Stallone thing in my head all the time. You know, life's not a matter of how hard you can hit. It's a matter of how, how hard you can get hit and keep hitting back. That's where you are, man. All right. So you got So you stutter. I get that. You're playing life on veteran mode. That's cool. You know what? I beat it on veteran mode. You can too. Suicide because of dick pics. Woody, I'm thinking of suicide because of one photo I sent one month ago. First off, I'm 14. This girl that goes to my school and is in a grade higher than me asked me to send a picture of my dick. She said she'd send something back, nudes. I had the biggest crush on her for a year, and she knew. One day, she asked for a dick pic and said she'd send something in return. I thought it would be my chance to prove how much I like her. I was wrong. I sent it through an app called Snapchat, and I had no regrets. Now I do. She said next year she's going to make my life a living hell by sending it to everyone in my grade and hers. I can't think of anything to do. She just flat out told me she hates me, and I can't change her mind if I do anything. I'm thinking of suicide. I have nothing else to turn to. I don't want to tell any adult because it would be awkward saying I sent a picture of my dick to a girl I've liked for a year. This doesn't have to be on Mail Monday. I just want any kind of reply because I have nothing or nobody to turn to. Thanks. All right, first off, I don't have to tell you that this was a mistake, right? I, you get that. I think, you're, I think you've, you, know, you mentioned it in your letter. But everyone else who's not you might not know this. You need to be super careful about this sort of thing. Uh, Snapchat is not safe. You know, yeah, the picture disappears in a few seconds, but that's long enough to get a screenshot, and you know you can do it, and, and so can other people who you send pictures to. Let's not dwell on that. I think we all know not to send dick pics to people we don't trust. Let's just be extra careful going forward. The next thing is how we respond to this. What are we going to do about it? And uh, I think what you want to do is make sure that you're the victim in this thing, right? It sounds bad, right? You're nobody's victim. But dude, she's a bitch. She's a horrible to her person. These bitches be crazy, right? That, uh, 
If you tell the world, yeah, I liked her, that's over now, I didn't know who she really was, then people are going to see her for the cruel Heather that she really is. It's a movie reference if you don't get it. People are going to see her as the mean girl because she is the mean girl. She's not going to be able to walk around sort of just casually attacking other people and without them knowing that she is an evil, evil witch of a girl who shouldn't be doing this sort of thing. That's, that's who she is. So yeah, you know, what's your public stance on this? I know denial is tempting, but it's not going to work for you, right? It, it, it's it's not going to work out. That she would, her story is plausible. People will believe her. Whatever. I I think what you want instead of you know just flat out denial is something closer to yeah, I liked her. That came and went. Now I know who she really is. <laughs> She's mean and she'll have the social ramifications. She'll have the social backlash of being mean to someone, of being a bully, and that's not going to work out for her. So, yeah, you know, bitches be crazy. I I wish they weren't, but there she is. So, um, <sighs> suicide's not the answer. That's not it. This is going to blow over. To you, this dick pic seems like the center of the world, but to the rest of the world, it's just a casual one-day story, and it'll come and it will go, and uh, everyone in high school either poops themselves or slips on a banana in front of the auditorium or says something embarrassing or gets turned down by a girl in a public place or maybe a girl slaps them when they go for a kiss. Who knows? Something embarrassing is going to happen in everybody in throughout high school. And uh, yeah, it looks like you got yours out early, but yeah, you'll live through this. It's going to be okay. And I hope that she doesn't do what she says she's going to do. And if she does, I hope that she's treated like dirt for the rest of high school for being so horrible. 